All right, thank you so much for staying with Daybreak. I see a lot of your views coming through. We'll read some of them as time goes by, but we're winding up on this BBI issue. I'm scutting around it not to get into the details because there was a direct warning also from the court not to talk about the issues that are currently there, but we're just talking about the basics, the tenets, the outside of it. And Wamatangi, you know, we're talking about, and Mutua uh, brought it up, the burden of choice, mm. whether the people should have been allowed to just decide, because it is true that regardless of the process if it was going to come to the people yeah. who bears the burden of choice yeah. is it the judiciary or the people yeah. um, uh, first first uh, trevor i think um, we, we will have to apply our minds and our, and our discourse uh, properly and fairly to the concept and the doctrine of separation of powers as it's supposed to be applied in law yeah. Uh, and in as far as then, how should that be practiced in as far as the functions of each of the arms of government is concerned? And that would bring you to, to the question, then how would you properly make an argument that uh, the president is so wrong in making comments about uh, you know, a process that was concluded with a judgment that has got implications to the people he lead? And, 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 and I think uh, if, if that discussion is held uh, properly, uh, you, one would be very restrained to think that, that it is wrong for him as a head of state to make uh, such comments yeah. and, 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 and bring about or, or air his views in a way then that leads to this important question, for example, that you have brought about. Because, uh, you know, let it not be misconstrued that um, even as the process went on, and remember uh, that the BBI, uh, once, w once it was, um, you know, off the racks to where it ended in court, remember it started off with signatures of more than 3 million uh, Kenyans. And so even if you were to limit yourself to just that number, you'd be asking yourselves, do those 3 million people then deserve an answer? Do they, do, do they deserve, uh, you know, uh, then that discussion and a view that would tell them that then this is how the game ends for you? Yeah. And, 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 and I think that is, the, that's the bigger question here. Uh, and as you raise this question of the burden of choice, yeah. I, I, I I'm of the view, uh, family, uh, that, that I think whichever way we apply it, and, I, and I, I'm sure without having to delve too deeply into it, that even as the judiciary looks at this matter, they would be most, uh, you know, you know, more more inclined to restrain themselves a lot, uh, to get into to, to a ruling or a judgment or probably even 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 a line of thought yeah. or, or judgment that would seem to restrain or act to restrain uh, or stop that process ending with what Article 1 of the Constitution requires okay. and, 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 and what it implies yeah. with, 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 with the, uh, the sovereignty of, of, uh, and power belonging to, to, to the people. Okay. And, and so uh, I think at the end of the day, and, uh, and we, we all must agree that, that we have to respect our judiciary, that decisions uh, you know, have got to be respected, but, but it should not be a cube. It cannot be a, uh, you, you know, a tight box whereby uh, no one talks or no one speaks. Yeah. At the end of the day, uh, there, there needs to be ventilation of issues because this is really about ourselves, about our country. Okay. Uh, what what I, maybe I would, I would want just to, because I, I think finally even as we move towards the appeal, if you listen from outside, Trevor, this, this debate always revolves around one thing. Is it, is it a popular initiative? Was it, you know, should the president have been involved or, or should he even go ahead and comment? And I think, in my view, part yes. of the area where we've been making a big mistake is the misinterpretation that uh, a popular initiative is only uh, is supposed to be judged on the either the class, uh, the caliber, the credentials of, of those that started. And, and, and that, that, that discussion is there. Because if you listen to most of the comments that are even being made after Kisumu, yeah. it's on the basis that people then still believe that uh, the president should be locked out of, of, of any possibility that he can be a part or even play any role yeah in facilitating a popular initiative 
from happening. Yeah. And, and uh, because most of my, my colleagues have spoken about it, I, I share that view that okay. indeed uh, he has an important role to play. Remember uh, what uh, the law requires in Article uh, 257, uh, Trevor. Yeah. It suggests, or rather it says, that in that popular initiative, even if it is in form of just a ragtag, uh, you know, thought, or yeah. no, no matter how, how scrambled it is coming from in, anywhere, as long as it is prepared now to hit the road towards what a popular initi initiative should be, mm -hmm. then it has to be converted into a draft law. Okay. Meaning that it must have some format of, of acceptability and, and prepare it in a way that it needs to move now to the higher threshold yeah. of uh, being considered legally, uh, parliament looking at it at the end of the day, because the way it is, even if it was to come from people sitting somewhere in a cafeteria, yeah. uh, finally, it must be uh, dressed up, finessed, and cleaned up and polished to give it then the, uh, you, you know, the, the, the wheels to move, yeah. and, and, and then the hygiene. Uh, to be considered at, 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 at higher levels. That okay. means that it has to get input from uh, more refined quarters, All you right. know, from lawyers yeah. to the you know, judiciary and so on. Okay. Yeah. Governor, I want us to wind up on this issue and talk yes. about the Kemza scandal. But now there's a plan to bring some amendments through Parliament. Do you trust Parliament to <laughs> pull through? <laughs> uh, well, I don't know. I, I just think that uh, Parliament has already done its job. Let's take this to the people. Let the people say no and we go back to our lives, or say yes, and we continue with our lives, yeah. go back to our normal lives. Uh, because at the end of the day, we get too excited about these things, but they come and pass. But what I want to talk about is about the issue of discourse. And this feeling that uh, my good friend here, and uh, potential deputy president <laughs> in my government, uh, has, uh, has pointed out uh, clearly, and that is the ability for people to express themselves. We should yeah. be able to speak about issues regardless of who you are. Yeah. You shouldn't be constrained. Yeah. You know, you shouldn't be constrained. And you should be able to question things. And I like it when people question. Because it's when you question, that's mm -hmm. when you find new answers. We used to be told that their world is flat. And those who questioned it were now politically persecuted. Let me give you a story. Uh, a mother, uh, a daughter, a granddaughter asked, a daughter asked the mother, why is it when you cook a uh, sausage, you know those big German sausages, that you mm. cut one end and you cut the other end. Mm -hmm. Then you put it in the pan, in the oven. The mother said, because that is how you should cook ovens. You should cook sausages, because that's how it should be cooked. Mm -hmm. yeah. And who says so? The child asked. Because that's what my mother told me. So they went to the mother. They asked the mother, Mom, why, why do you cut the sausage on both sides? The, no, the grandmother said, because that's how it's supposed to be done. You don't question. It's you cut it, you cut it, you don't put it both ends. Yeah. That's how my mother taught me. They went to the great-grandmother who was still alive and asked grandma, great-grandma, why do you cut the sausage? And the grandma <laughs> said, because I grew up poor, our pan was small. It couldn't <laughs> all fit. So I had to cut both ends, yeah. do it or share, because but you need I, to cook it straight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So in the aspects of discourse, we have to realize that things change with time. And there's a reason for those things. And maybe what the president was doing, and I'm assuming he's, he's telling uh, people that uh, let's have this discourse across the country. And even as you apply the law, because that's how it's been, you have to think about the prevailing circumstances in this country yeah. at this time. Okay. You know, we are citizens of Kenya. Yeah. Where is Kenya? Where are we going? What is the history of the BBI? What necessitated the BBI? Is everything all right in Kenya? Or do we need to tweak a few things here and there? Yeah. So it's a question that the judges have been told. As you think about the fi finesse of the law, yeah. think about also where is our country going and what is best for our country. Okay. Beyond us today, right. we're talking about for our children yeah. and our children's children. Okay. I want to get all your quick comments in terms of when uh, the parliament should actually bring some of those amendments. Gerard Gay, it's <coughs> coming to the Senate and the National <coughs> Assembly. We already think, have 8-8 uh, eight, eight on both sides. I think uh, uh, from where I sit, I've already expressed my position. Uh, I, I vehemently oppose any, any position or any move by my colleagues to create an IPPG-like agreement uh, to try and proceed with BBI, uh, Trevor. And, 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 I, and I think uh, we're saying this respectfully because parliament has been overrun by the executive. And I don't see any need why we should use parliamentary initiative. We should allow the proponents of BBI 
to continue with the route that they want to do. So, so any, any, any member of National Assembly or Senator who purports or uh, try, I've seen they are coming up with some uh, kangaroo or some funny, funny groupings that they want to discuss the BBI route through, B, through Parliament. I, I can tell you there will be no meaningful change because even if we were to suggest, for example, an expansion of Parliament, for example, it is unpalatable to Kenyans. I wish as parliamentary, and I did say on the floor of the Senate yesterday, that I wish we would be more focused. I would have been happy is members of National Assembly and the Senate would be forming a committee to work with the executive on how 47.5 million Kenyans can access vaccine, on how our counties can get timely disbursement of money with the, so that they can caution them during this COVID pandemic. Yeah. So from where I sit and, 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 I, and I believe let the BBI continue with its life. There is what in chemistry call a half-life or whatever you want to call it. But let us not bring it back to parliament. Parliament should singularly focus on the way. And I want to advise my colleagues who want to take that route. It is uh, unpalatable. It is an insult to Kenyans to try and take that route. When we are being faced with so many problems that we, we are looking at the moment. And I remember even my, my whip is here. We are now discussing CARA on how counties can access more funds with the 53 billion additional shareable revenue <coughs> to more counties. Yeah. And the, the problems that counties are facing, and, and I've seen colleagues of Council of Governors through uh, the, the lives of Governor Mutua, have been complaining, as a Senate, we should be singular more focused on how devolution will function. Not to sit in some hotels under Chai and Mandazi and trying to be politically correct by saying, let us sit, agree with the BBI proposals, so even when it wants to come to Parliament, I can promise you, I will, if it means to be alone, and I've been alone before, I will oppose any move to use a, a, a like IPPG process where, the, the, where we are looking at. Okay. Let BBI go. It's, and, I, and I want to finally say I must loud the Episcopal Conference, the Catholic bishops. They have already said, and I think you, uh, you run that story, that uh, if BBI come, let us just finish up with 2022 elections. Uh, go for BBI, and I'm happy President Uru Kenyatta will have become private citizen. Then he can now continue with promoting BBI in then. All right. Yeah. Attorney, yeah. you know, it, 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 you know he's, in, he's made a very strong statement that yes. parliament is overrun by the executive. Yeah. Uh, uh, Trevor, you know, since uh, the president made up a, de a, a decision yeah. to kick out uh, <coughs> the Tanga Tanga team from the epicenter of corruption in government. They've always been, you know, yapping and claiming that, you know, <laughs> trying to direct government on what to do. <laughs> well, you know, they are actually, you know, part and parcel of government. So for Chilarge to claim that, you know, now, that now is the time for parliament to do one, two, three, are they forgetting that they have also this thing called bottom-up? Is it bottom-up yes. that you are claiming will take no, effect? You are, you are doing very will well. take effect out of 2022. You should, you should actually be infusing those ideas in government now because you are, the DP has refused to exit government even when we told him that he has no role. He should do what Jaramogi did in 1969 when he decided to leave government. 1970, uh, was it, was it 1970? Yes. 69, yes. yes. When Jaramogi decided to exit government, the DP should do that so that he can speak from outside. But right now, parliament has time to do anything that it feels, it deems fit to do. Yeah. But on this question of BBI, I think I disagree with the, the few of Azila's legislators <laughs> who have come out to claim that they can take over, Parliament can take over the process and mm -hmm. run with it. I think BBI remains a popular initiative. And whatever the, situ the, the, the situation, courts, uh, processes will, be, will, will, will go through the court process. Yeah. And I'm hopeful that uh, in the end, the people of Kenya will have to will put their say on on yeah. BBI. But has Parliament been overrun? Parliament by the is not Parliament is not being overrun by the executive. <laughs> lying, because uh, uh, you know Cherargue and uh, Cherargue li likes to say that uh, I think this is a Tanga Tanga version of, of things. Recently we were voting on the BBI on the floor of the house. Uh, you saw members of Tanga Tanga they came and supported the the BBI billion on the floor of the house and some of us were even wondering why they did that. Were you forced by the executive to come and vote in the document? Some of your members who had even called press conferences and said that, you know, this BBI is very bad, we can't, we can't support it. They came and supported it. I want to know how, how the, what the role the executive played in pushing some people like uh, uh, Kimani Ngujiri. Is it Kimani Ngujiri of Bahati? Bahati. Bahati. Yeah. Whether there was executive pressure and whether Tanga Tanga leaders are, are, are 
uh, weaklings who got pushed by the executive. I think on our side, we <laughs> are willingly support uh, government decisions in, on the floor of the house because of the handshake which exists, which is a, which is a, a public, uh, you know, it's, a, it's, it's, it's in public domain that we support, we work with government yeah. in the, that arrangement. Okay. And lastly, uh, 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 Trevor, I think it's important for Kenyans to appreciate where we have come from. And if you want to do this, you have to, you have to look at how our people in Kisumu behave during the Madaraka Day celebrations. And I saw his party leader claiming that uh, Kisumu now has a million ha of hustlers who were excited when they saw him. As were you surprised party. at the reception of Ruto? Who, we were not surprised because, you know, we, cha we are champions of national reconciliation. And uh, we mean it. It is something that we, 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 we advocate for and we do it from our hearts. <laughs> and we want, we, we want to urge, uh, uh, you know, Tanga Tanga to embrace national reconciliation and allow anybody to go anywhere and speak his views. Do you know that even Moses Kuria was well received in Kisumu, despite uh, the fact that he had castigated the Kisumu visit and claimed that all development projects in this country by Jubilee government is being directed to our region. So. This is really the message which needs to go out, that you know, Kenya, Kenya is one country. We, we must love each other. We must give everybody opportunity to go anywhere. And uh, I want to urge Tanga Tanga not to block us yeah. from going to Eldoret, because we plan to go to Eldoret, we want to plan to go to Githurai, we plan to go everywhere else. But there's no <laughs> public gathering. So so no, 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 we will, we will go. We, no, no, we will, we will visit those places. Yes. We will visit those places within the uh, confines of the protocols be, uh, uh, COVID protocols, and we, we want <laughs> them to follow the example that has been uh, <laughs> displayed by our people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. you know, the, you're the majority whip on this. So there's a statement that has been made by uh, Gerard Gay that parliament is overrun by the executive. I'd like to hear your view. That, 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 that parliament is, is under capture. Yes. Trevor, first, uh, I think it is important to answer to the main question that you asked, and yeah. then, uh, then revert to the comments of... Um, Chair again, uh, you know, Trevor. Let's let's remember uh, the facts. One Parliament still has a lifespan that lasts up to 2022 August. Yeah. So, if you count those days from today, that is a near plus. So, the question one would want to be asking themselves is, what role can Parliament play to offer leadership in this in in this uh, venture? within those 12 plus months remaining. Supposing parliament was to be called upon yeah. at a time when this nation needs leadership, would parliament be ready to stand up? I think, I think that should be the fundamental question. And if, if, if you ask me, uh, Trevor, uh, now that uh, the, the BBI process is at the appellate court's level, the way forward now would be to allow that process to move on. Once it's moved on, then the outcome be as it may yeah. uh, after the considerations and, 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 and the matter has been prosecuted. Then we, 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 we can say, fine, yeah. this matter has found its, 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 its way in court and so it can proceed this way. But supposing, and, and, and I want to, uh, to, to probably remind uh, my, my, my colleague and good friend, Cherage, and the school of thought from the uh, political faction that, that he, he, he comes from at this time, uh, Tanga Tanga, there was no time, even as expressed by the deputy president, from the flow of bombers of Kenya, even in all the things that he said outside. Yeah. There is no one time when he said that he was 100% opposed to the BBI. Indeed, on the flow of bombers, what the deputy president then did was to read a line or a coterie of issues he thought then would be corrected to make it a good uh, process, yeah. which probably, you know, by estimation, would have amounted to about maybe 20% or so of the issues that were there. But they never said that this is a damned process and, and uh, all the outcome is, 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 is uh, terrible and cannot fit in the country. And so what does that suggest? That indeed, and this has been the proposal so, so many times in m most of the colleagues of uh, Cherage in that group, have even made suggestions that we should have probably picked this and that and that and that and saved uh, the country, uh, you know, to go to a referendum and saved money and do whatever. Indeed, I think, if I'm, if I'm not wrong, Cherage himself has made those claims severally, not only here, but also on the floor of the House. Yeah. And so supposing then it was get to a point where you'd ask if this process is finally uh, frustrated, 
if we found that the, the current uh, venture is a dead end, would Parliament play a role if at a critical moment to save the best for last? Yeah. If you if you if you, if you to, to ask that question, and 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 I think that's what we would be saying that uh, Parliament had better be on the ready. If it came to a point whereby we would say then. Uh, deal with the most fundamental and leave the rest. That should also be a possibility. You know, w w what in my school of thought uh, I, I, I believe in is that you should never burn bridges, never leave any options closed, because you might need them. And, 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 and I think uh, the suggestion that uh, Parliament is, is under capture is, is completely erroneous. Uh, parliament functions the way it is supposed to function today. There are decisions that have been made on the floor of that house that have been completely contrary to the expectations of everyone who would be criticizing uh, Parliament. And, and, and I think at the right time, if we were to get to a point whereby then those decisions would be made, we certainly would be able to do that. And the most evident case and most recent, as to the independence and thinking of, of, of uh, Parliament, is the report that was just uh, tabled in the House on the BBI. Remember, in that report, the committee which comprises of all the yeah. best legal minds in the House, coming from all the divides of, of, the, of the, the political representation in Parliament, they were, you know, uh, they, they were brave enough to even look at some of those uh, matters and some of the provisions in the BBI, and they would say this particular provision itself is unconstitutional. Some of us disagreed, even on the floor of the House, but they had the audacity to say so. And uh, they, 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 they would make this proposal or that proposal or that proposal. Rem remember, even when the BBI itself came to the Parliament, to, yeah. to the House, one of the big questions was, should Parliament play a role in opening this uh, document yeah. and have discourse in Parliament and invite public participation? A decision was made to uh, the affirmative that indeed we should uh, do so. So, so. so that points out uh, to you that uh, the suggestion that Parliament is unable to function because it's captured is, is, is um, probably at, at best yeah. uh, part of uh, uh, you know, uh, political positioning by my good uh, friend Cheragay. I think when it gets to that point, we should be able to have an open mind if we are called upon to look at what can we salvage okay. and deal with it. But I believe uh, the process in court uh, should be given its, 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 its day. If, if <coughs> the court finds, yeah. and I believe they would, uh, that uh, this process needs to end up with the person at the end of the, 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 the rail. That is the common person to make the decision and say, this we like, this we don't like, this we like, this we don't like, yeah. which would be in a referendum. I think that would be the best closure for this process. Okay. Although it, it, it would always remain contested, whichever okay. way you look at it. All right. Yeah. Yeah. But, but well, uh, I think we've spoken about this for long. It's been one hour on the yeah. same topic, more or less. Uh, there's nothing more to add. I think the, the main point is uh, let the BBI run its course. Yeah. Let people decide whether, to, whether they like it or not. There's an aspect, as Mandelo chapter party leader, we went and I went to uh, KCC in the public participation model and I gave my memorandum and I read it. And we requested that uh, instead of bundling everything together, this is not what the executive wants, yeah. but we felt as Mandela Chap Chap, looking at the bigger picture, instead of bundling everything together, people could also have been given a choice and told question one, do you like this? Question two, do you like this? Because for me, there are critical things in that BBI that are so important to the economic well-being of our country, yeah. such as the increasing of money to counties, the tax break uh, to, uh, for the youth, and, and the employment, the fight against corruption. So there are aspects there that are, that are critical and very important to us as we move forward. Not just, uh, you know, Kenya has become a country of a few billionaires and millionaires who are very poor. Mm -hmm. We also need a system that actually lifts everybody up and so I saw some aspects of the BBI were very good in terms of lifting all of us up. Yeah. But uh, I think it's time for us to move to another topic. All right. Trevor. Yes, let's take a quick break now and then come back and talk about the Kemza scandal. And now the Senate committee has decided that they should sell at a loss. But first, Jacob Abere Matlala says the summary line, National Assembly and Senate as legislative role is questionable. Now they are errand boys and girls for the executive. Look at how they pass the BBI bill without questioning. Nobody cares about what is going on there. It's our time to eat. That is their motto. 
let's injenga wakungu riga and says kenyans and our leaders need to stop being of ambitious on our constitutional articles so long as one is legally a kenyan we are supposed to be constitutionally eligible to express our perspectives and understanding on different matters and Silverton says, if the sitting president is allowed to amend the constitution, then he can prolong his tenure as well. That is what the 2010 constitution is protecting leaders from doing. And Felixius Atandi from Keroka Kisi says, let not the government force Kenyans to vote for BBI. Give Kenyans time to think of, and maybe after elections, we can see what to do. All right, <laughs> let's take a quick break on that. When we come back, we talk about the Kemza issue and then a few other topics as we wind up on this here in a bit. Right. Thank you for staying with Daybreak. Now let's switch gears and talk about Kemza and Parliament now. And the key Senate committee is now calling for the immediate disposal of all COVID-19 supplies procured by the National Medical Agency. That's Kemza. The health committee says that urgent sale of the items at current market prices is the only way to minimize the losses. The items were purchased at exorbitant prices and now run the risk of even expiring. Dr. Mutu, I'll start with you on this. This is an issue that we've spoken about before, but now yes. we are beginning to accept that we need to cut our losses. Mm. But at the same time, the president didn't mention anything about corruption in his speech. Mm. Well, I think it's because he's talked about corruption many, many other times, and we always talk about corruption. As I've said here before, the only way to fight corruption is for people when they are arrested for the court cases to end very quickly and and i've given examples here look at example of even murder cases in this country or in other countries <coughs> pardon me uh george floyd from the day he was killed within 10 months somebody had been convicted and jailed when it came to the issue of uh, the chicken gate People in the UK were arrested, convicted, jailed, served their time, left, and uh, the court cases in Kenya are still going on. So the issue of corruption here in this Kemsa, from the time the Kemsa issue broke, if people had been arrested, taken to court, and convictions been given out, we'll be dealing about, we'll be talking about other things. Everything else, Nipata Potea, whether, they, they, whether they're able to go out there and... Uh, cut our losses, because we need to cut our losses at the end of the day, 
things need to be sold, cut the losses. But we need to find out who was involved, what they do, and let them be given their chance in court to, yeah. to, uh, to defend themselves. Because even investigations uh, bring out a lot of uh, innocent people are jailed, are uh, not jailed, are, are, uh, are charged. But if you're charged and you're told that you stole money and you had nothing to do with it, and the case drags for seven years, six years, then justice is not done. So, and that is one of the things that uh, BBI was going to cure. Yeah. Staying about within six months, ukie kwa pingu leo, within six months, either uko committee, amo meachiliwa, and life moves on. Yeah. And that <coughs> is how we deal with this KEMSA issue. Okay. A lot of money was lost, as we know, as has been talked about. A lot of tenders were given in very funny ways. We went back to that old, uh, it's time to eat uh, kind of syndrome where people took advantage of a situation, yeah. which is the Kenyan way. Across the board, people took advantage of this situation because people were suffering, uh, there was a disaster, and so people felt like it is our time to eat yeah. and let's inflate the prices and everything. So let them do what is necessary at this time, but what to me is critical, let's have people charged. And when they are charged, Sisayi tuko June. By December, your story ishe. Tukingia January next year, watu wamesha fungwa, wagino wamechiliwa, the assets have been taken. Then people will say we are serious about fighting corruption. Hii ingine yote ni story. Wometangi, what is the best way of dealing with this KEMSA issue? You know, I think what, in my view, would be our best approach first is to dissect and ask ourselves, how did we get to the problem first? And part of what I would be urging to adapt is a proposal that was in the, in, in the report by the committee that was tabled yesterday yeah. to decentralize uh, the role played by KEMSA uh, as far as county governments are concerned and, and, and have that function uh, being played at county government level whereby a county government is able to procure for its own needs within a competitive environment, not limited and channeled only to KEMSA. Because uh, the good ideas and thoughts around establishment of KEMSA have failed to bear fruit, they have failed to deliver. Uh, because then what, what we've ended up with is uh, creating a monopoly of, 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 of supply and, and, and procurement, which has had the reverse uh, result of being uncompetitive, of being uh, price worthy for, 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 for that matter. And so, so that if you find part, uh, part of the allegations which were there and the committee expressed itself in that report, is that the procurement prices were exorbitant. That's what KEMSA was, trying to, was, uh, was intended to first uh, avoid, such that they would have the latitude of looking for the lowest, best prices and best quality and then uh, be able to conveniently and in good time uh, supply county governments. Uh, but, but see what has happened. Uh, they have formed a cartel uh, down at, at the at KEMSA level. Yeah. Uh, procure, uh, of course, uh, very, very unevenly. And then limit county governments uh, yeah. and, and become very, very much more un uncompetitive by even allowing county governments which come, they, they procure, they go and dispense, they don't pay. So, so you, 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 you eventually have a process that doesn't work. Uh, secondly, uh, I, th I think what, what happened is, should be a big lesson to, 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 to government. Mm -hmm. what have we, where have we gone and how far have we succeeded in the fight against corruption? I don't think that we have made much progress if you ask me to make a final judgment on it. If what happened at KEMSA at a critical time uh, when the country is almost burning, you saw what happened in India. Uh, when they were hit by, 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 by the Indian variant. Yeah. And a country where we have all reverted for going for salvation, uh, as, a, as, as a country ourselves, when anybody is, is ill here with, 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 with uh, cancer, with other terminal diseases, we've always reverted to India because of its efficiency and availability of medication. But see how they got strained. Mm -hmm. And this is how we reacted ourselves when we had that problem. And, and, and um, then that tells you where our morals, you know, you know, what would you be saying to that person who sat at camps at that time and chose to cut deals yeah. when the country has declared in pseudo or in quotes a state of emergency? And, and, you, you, and, and you decide that this is the best time to, to, to line up your pocket. And uh, th that, that, Trevor, should be a major 
major uh, pronouncement on where we are about uh, corruption levels in our country. Yeah. The, the best way to deal with Kem Kemsa, in my view, right now, review the entire thing, uh, limit its powers, decentralize uh, Kemsa, and ensure that now county governments can procure the way they should and hold governors yeah. and their team accountable for the process of procurement and the costs and the dispensation and the state of healthcare yeah. at county government level. Because already we have uh, crossed a, a Rubicon that we cannot come uh, uh, back to. The, that is the fact <coughs> that we have already devolved the health function to county governments. Yeah. It, 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 is, it is a contradiction. It's a dichotomy that you cannot, you, you ca you, you cannot uh, reconcile. Yeah. That you are saying you have the powers here, now you, you as county governments procure, but then you, you limit uh, procurement to everybody uh, be lining uh, to Kemsa yeah. in, in, in Nairobi. I, I think uh, it, it doesn't help us. At the end of the day, and yeah. I want to agree with what uh, my future president he has said mm -hmm. and, uh, and 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 you know we have we have agreed that uh, this is the side of president <laughs> so <laughs> this is the side of the agatante politicians <laughs> that's, that's, that's the side of uh, <laughs> you know Charaghe being on that side <laughs> so i'm on the wrong side <laughs> I should, because I, I should cross that side <laughs> no this, this is the side of president <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, at the end of the day, yeah. I want to agree with what uh, my colleague here said, uh, that uh, indeed we must see the kin, the consequences being spelled out as demonstrably as possible to those people who are culpable at, at, at uh, Kemsa. Yeah. Because in the event that doesn't happen, then the wrong message is not only sent, but wrong uh, lessons. Yeah. And, and, and emulatable examples set, 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 set in Kemsa. And, and so you, you cannot argue in any time that, that uh, uh, there is anything that has been achieved by the whole of this process, including the proceedings in Parliament, if yeah. people don't pay for what they did. Yeah. Okay. Take a look at the story on the back page of the Daily Nation. We'll talk about that in just a bit. Fake papers and civil servants facing the acts. But what do you think is the lasting solution to this Kemsa issue before we get into that? Trevor, you know, this, this Kemsa issue, issue is something that really is very painful. Because if there is anything that has been managed in this country, as far as the own corruption is concerned, is this Kemsa, Kemsa scandal. First of all, this issue has been investigated by two departmental committees in parliament in the Senate, in the National Assembly. The National Assembly, there's a P Public Investments Committee, there's the, the Health Committee, and then there's this Senate Committee, and then there's the Auditor General also that has done some audit on it. Then we have the ESCC. You want to ask yourself, why? Why is it that nobody has been arraigned in court as far as this case is concerned? That is a question that you want to ask. After all this, public bodies have spent enormous resources looking at the same thing. So that really tells you uh, how huge, you know, how powerful the people involved in this KEMSA are, you know. And, you know, I'm one of the first MPs to lift the lead on this kind of, you know, I went to the media and gave my statement on, on the corruption, on the, on the KEMSA scandal. And even the people that I mentioned, none of them is, has been investigated. In fact, some of the people I mentioned, you know, they are the ones who are, be, who are offering, you know, uh, you know, actually they are the people who are s helping in investigations. So we, we, I think that, you know, we are really not a serious uh, country, you know. This issue, you know, especially that people took advantage of, uh, you know, a pandemic, you know, that has threatened the economy of this country, uh, is threatening to stall the economy, that has actually led into, you know, a lot of people losing livelihood. Uh, a lot of youth are jobless. Some people have relocated. You know, I went to my constituency and I found that uh, uh, primary schools, you know, the enrollment has gone up. And when I asked, them, they said, you know, we used to live in Nairobi, in Mombasa. We lost our jobs. We have come back to the village. So this, the, the implication of COVID is really huge. Yeah. And so I think that this is something that I think the presidency needs to wake up and do something. We really cannot allow uh, these stories to go around. But as, well and as parliament, are your hands tied? No, parliament, is, parliament has, has, has not really done its best in this issue. And I think I must, I must say the truth, yeah. that despite 
several committees looking at this scandal. There's no committee that has gave us a, a watertight recommendation. This recommendation is about, you know, taking procurement of cancer drugs to counties. That is not the, it's not the solution. Yeah. This, we need a solution on <laughs> pilferage. Yeah. Pilferage, corruption, what, 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 what are we saying about it? Yeah. Who was responsible? Because after all those stories we saw, people passing through commercial street and being invited to come and procure, you know. And the president also gave a timeline. We haven't seen Yeah, so, so I think this is, a, this is a real joke, and I think this is where, you know, I want to urge the, the head of state yeah. to make a decision on this issue. Because I think the people who are involved are so, are so powerful and huge yeah. that I think they are untouchable. And I think this is where the problem is. These people need to be touched okay. so that uh, we can get the solution. As to, as to whether counties have capacity to procure, I doubt they don't have. Okay. And they need a combination to push uh, uh, procurement of drugs to counties is something that I will oppose because I have not seen anything palatable that this, any county has done since inception of revolution. Okay. There's nothing that you can be proud of. Uh, in my county, the only thing you can be proud of is an office, governor's office only, nothing <laughs> else. So I think uh, counties <laughs> need to, they cannot be told to procure. This. Some of these huge tenders, yeah. huge procurement, they can't because they don't have capacity. They have not spent time in building capacity. Counties are ethnicized. If you go to Machakos, you find that my friend here, everybody's he's gone out to look for only campus to work for him. So those are that is not a, a, the best way to build uh, capacity for a county, yeah. for a, for a, a system. And that, that's the trend everywhere. Even in CI, only Luos are there. You know. So we need to change the way we are approaching uh, building building capacity for devolution. Mm -hmm. And I think it is not yet time for us to give these counties huge responsibilities because okay. they are not able to do it. Okay, Governor Mutu, I'll give you a chance to respond to that in mm -hmm. a bit, but mm -hmm. the best way of dealing with this game is the issue. Uh, no, uh, what I can say is that uh, you remember Kenyans are forgetting that President Uhuru gave the DCI DPP 60 days to investigate this matter. And EACC, DCI and DPP have not done anything. I think this is a disrespect to the President. This is a serious presidential directive. And it shows how lame duck the president is. Because if he can give a directive that within 60 days, this matter should be handled. And if some people, had, if this was a functioning government, some heads would have, have ruled. So why are people not obeying the presidential directive? Secondly, it is sad that it happened under handshake arrangement. Uh, Samuel, uh, I mean, uh, Andre Batandi here has been telling us how good the handshake arrangement is. I didn't know the handshake arrangement was to create a good environment to perpetuate corruption scandal. And what Atand is not telling the public is that some of the members of the handshake were involved the allegations of corruption allegations in the Kemsa supplies uh, 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 and the, the supplies that were taken to Kemsa. And, and I think as a country we need to be honest. You know they have been saying oh when we had not come to government nowadays you know they are in government eh? there is no longer an opposition. They'd be telling us, oh, you know, before we came to government, there, has be, there was a lot of corruption, but now they came in and perpetuated the corruption under KEMSA. Finally, is that um, this issue of KEMSA is that we need to know what happened on the 60 days that the president directed the ESEC, DCI, and DPP to work on. Number two, I have seen recommendation by the Senate committee and also the both parliament, both houses. There is nothing that can be done at this point because it looks like the parliament is, uh, has not been able to make any uh, recommendations. Because what I would have expected parliament committees to make, both in the National Assembly and the Senate, that some of the companies that had participated in this scandal must be blacklisted from doing business in Kenya and across the world. That's a serious recommendation. Number two, we should be able to unmask what we call in company law lifting the veil to know who are behind the architects of these companies that supply to KEMSA at exorbitant prices. Number three, these supplies were being taken. We should be told, for example, my county government appeared yesterday of Nandi. When you look at the Auditor General by Nancy Katungo under the special audit, the KEMSA supplies were released. But when you look at the, 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 the there was none that was received in Nandi County for, by the county executive. So the question is, 
what is what what how did the counties benefit you have seen counties complaining daily they are yet to receive camps supplies we are being told i saw the citizen story a, f a few weeks a, a few months ago they had gone to the camps are go down the everything is still intact because of investigation but i think first things first yeah. let the, the parliament make a serious recommendation and it is good the whip is here you should take it up with sbc and the committee line uh, line number two is release the supplies camps are supplies to our counties yeah. the surgical masks the ppes and many other things for me the only thing that uh, the, the, we got out of 247 244 million that was allocated to the nandi county executive through the the covid funds yeah. is that uh, just like atandia said the only thing we, we got was uh, laptops and and uh, a very big printer to print just pamphlets to 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 to, to tell people to avoid uh, covid is real that is the only thing that we got as nandi county and maybe an airtime of over uh, around 300,000. So I think that that is what it shows that we, we the, the, the problem I want to request that even as we investigate the CAMSA, yeah, uh, if we should investigate how the county utilize their funds. And the special audit was done by Nancy Katung. So I hope the recommendations of the Auditor General, yeah. we should also look, for example, in Machakos, the, 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 and the governor is, is here, we should look at the, 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 they should look at the recommendation to look at the response to the audit queries. If there is any problem that was done, then we can allow the DCI and DPP. So let us not yeah. limit only to KEMSA, yeah. but let us also look into the day. But I hope, uh, and I hope the president yeah. is watching, but I can sense Senator Kemani Wamatangi, who is a good friend, <laughs> that he should okay. remind the president Trevor. that there were 60 days that were being given to investigate the KEMSA. I hope when he visits state outs for, uh, for daily updates on what is happening in the Senate, he should be able to remind the president the Trevor. six days rule. Trevor, Trevor, yes. Trevor, don't allow, yes. don't yes. allow Gerald Gay to get away with some blanket statements, you know, which he can't sub uh, substantiate. How, how is uh, the handshake uh, involved in these scandals, you know? Because, you see, you know, th they have always been, you know, claiming that they are members of the ODM party that were involved in these scandals. But they have been, they have been unable even to cite any name. So I think uh, I would like, uh, you know, my friend here to withdraw those statements that in the handshake with is, is, is a creator of, uh, of of the scandal the cancer scandal <laughs> we we have seen the people who have appeared before these parliamentary committees yeah. we have seen the people who have been called you know i have not seen any politician from the odm side so i think it is really wrong for these people you know these people were even asking us asking for amnesty for corruption they have even told us that you know we need to forget about what people have stolen and let us start, start afresh. This is what they are saying. That is so a dangerous blanket so, statement so also. Yeah. It's making up. Not yes, that happens. No, 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 maybe no, no, I think, it, can it I assist that time before you meet the president? Before you meet, before you cross over to presidential side, can I just put it? It is in the open. You know, before you go to presidential side, you can finish. Trevor, can I say something? It is only the president's side that can make sense in this kind of discussion. So allow the governor. Can I let the governor speak? So then we'll come back to oh. you. And, um, and then allow allow the next future president also <laughs> to make their comments, and then we can have sense in this. Okay. Please, Go ahead. Future, future president. You know, you know. Um, I've listened to the comments, and uh, I see my good friend getting agitated because of the of the push that uh, this was a handshake, a, a corruption under the handshake. But from where I sit, it's because it's a science of relief <coughs> from the other team of saying, oh, so because they have been also been accused of stealing the dams, stealing other things. So it's a sense of relief for them that for once, it is not only them who are under attack. By the end of the day, it is the normal Kenyan who is suffering because it doesn't matter who steals in this country. When you steal, you are taking it from that poor mother in the village who has very little money who has to pay VAT. That young man who has no job, or young girl who has no job, who has to pay VAT when they go and buy milk for their child. And so theft is theft, wheezy and wheezy, regardless of who, who is doing it. Yeah. I want to educate my good friend uh, a little bit. You will forgive me to use the word educate, uh, because it is not all bad. And I agree with Senator Matangi when he talks about uh, procurement being done at the level of the counties. And uh, I know you may come from a county that uh, maybe you say doesn't work, I don't know. 
but it may be good for you to come to Machakos and see the miracle we have there mm. in healthcare. <laughs> I want to welcome you, and you'll be shocked because you come to Machakos, things work. Mm -hmm. Our healthcare, we have ambulances in every administrative location carrying you for free of charge. We've carried nearly 700,000 people over the last six, seven years. We have a Machakos Cancer Center where you can get chemotherapy, the only count with a cancer center. We treat yes. you for free. You don't have yeah. to pay 10, 20 million or go to India. We are treating you. Come mm -hmm. to Machakos and see wards that are clean. People don't share beds. Our mothers yes, yeah. are taking uh, showers. Come to Machakos and you realize that get a list of our medical officers. These are the doctors. 70% are not cumbers. Yeah. They are from mm. the rest of the country. From mm. Siaya, from Marsabit, from Nyeri, from everywhere. Look at the complement of our nurses, and we've hired more nurses than any other county because we want to provide health care. It works, my friend. So because it has failed in where you come from or where you, you are, doesn't mean that it has failed in the country. Devolution works. Yeah. When we took over as a governors, this country was very bad. I mean, everything was being run from Nairobi, from the headquarters of uh, the Minister of Health. In Mafia House. Mafia House. Mafia House. So you your Mafia House, your cartels. And imagine everything. I mean, when I became governor of Machakos, I could smell the hospital, the placentas of mothers who had given birth, 200 meters from the hospital. You didn't need to be told where the hospital is. All you had to do was to smell the air. That's how bad it was. When I went to Kisi, uh, at one time we went there with Kibaki, and I went there uh, with Charity Ngilu's Minister. We toured Kisi Hospital. Terrible. Now go to Kisi and see the miracles that uh, Ongwai has done. Go to Kisumu and see what Anyangnyong has done. Go to my friend Kericho and see what has happened. Things are moving. Go to Nyeri. So you, you can't just say that uh, devolution has not worked because it doesn't work in one place. So my friend, I don't know what you're doing tomorrow. Uh, we can take a drive to Machakos, <laughs> and uh, give you a personal tour uh -huh. and allow you to go around and see. Because I don't want you to give up hope. Don't give up hope. These yes. things can work yes. under the right leadership and when focus. Right. And so going back when to devolution, we didn't have a lot of challenges. The, the whole issue of KEMSA is that KEMSA allows the pooling of resources so that you can have a bargaining point. You tell people, I want to buy in wholesale. So instead of selling me this uh, uh, paracetamol at two shillings, sell it to me at 50 cents because I'm buying in bulk and then be able to distribute to the counties. Counties still pay KEMSA for that. So that's the advantage of KEMSA that has been there. And KEMSA well run can work very well. But we've, we've had shortages. Yeah. I mean, as I said, I've got a Machakos Cancer Center. We've had issues where we don't have cancer medicine because with the law that Parliament passed said that we buy everything from KEMSA and KEMSA doesn't have it. So we need to have the freedom as counties to be able to procure what KEMSA is, doesn't have. Yeah. So we say KEMSA is procure. You're the first point of uh, call. But if you don't have, I'm not going to let my people suffer. And as you know, in Machakos, the demand is very high because I give 100% universal health care. You can do brain surgery. Uh, you can go for brain surgery. You pay nothing. And so I need to have the medicine. And so I'm tied by the law. Yeah. So we need to have that freedom mm -hmm. to buy from KEMSA, but also counties need also to procure. All right. Omedangi? Yes, uh, Trevor. I think um, first, let me, let, me, let me start by uh, just having this... Um, a discussion with my good friend um, Senator Cheragay because uh, you know he's used that term lame duck president many times mm -hmm. and it is, I think it's, it's probably a high time to bring it into proper co you know conceptualization <laughs> first uh, because uh, I'm sure uh, Cheragay is, is you know he's a, he's a legal practitioner for, for that matter so I'm sure he's, he's done quite a bit of yes, you are going to quote the the, 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 the legal term, practitioner the term purpose. lame duck in, uh, in uh, <laughs> political speak, actually, refers Damn to, in it from its uh, invention yeah. in, in American politics, it refers to an official elected who is leaving office and whose successor has been already elected into office and is waiting for that transitional period to move. 
So uh, whenever you have used that term, uh, probably uh, correct your conceptualization. That is, that is the meaning of lemdak, uh, you know, wh when, you, wh when it has ever been used in political speak. It just, just means that, uh, Trevor, if you're going away and have been elected, you're waiting for your few transitional days, that time your powers are reduced. So you, there's nothing much you can do. So, you know, sometimes we just pick phrases and throw them. Uh, so it is important for, for, for him to, to know when, wh 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 what he's saying. But if I can just bring myself to address probably the expression as he may have intended it, because I, I can bring my mind close to probably what was he intending to say. Uh, and, and, and I would, I would term it very wrong, wrong in this sense. That, uh, you know, if you try to create uh, a perception whereby it is okay for people to, uh, you know, people who are adults, people who have taken oath of office, people who are paid to do a job, that it is okay for them to engage, plunder public resources, and then blame it on, on the executive, or maybe a president, or a cabinet secretary, or a governor. That's wrong. And that is why, even in our law, individualization of responsibility is key in what has happened. And such so that when you yeah. find that somebody goes and, 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 and uh, misuses office, procures at exorbitant prices, uh, goes and skews procurement such that it is done by his relatives and friends and political uh, cronies and bedfellows. That person is supposed to bear responsibility for what he has done and his actions, and that is why you cannot have Trevor going to jail on behalf of Wamatangi. It cannot be. And it would be very wrong uh, for us to preach that kind of concept just for the purposes of throwing political salvos and, and, and shots at somebody we think that would not want to hit politically. And, and so, it, because this is a mind-shaping discussion that we have every Thursday morning. Yeah. I, I would want to urge my colleagues on the other side, and uh, before Atandi came, uh, <laughs> it used to be, uh, you know, the, 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 the side of, of lawyers, barristers and lawyers and, and, uh, and upcoming, and upcoming supporters of presidents. <laughs> 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 now, I would, I would want to urge uh, my good friend, uh, you know, uh, Cheragay, to, 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 to shape the discourse such that then we, we, we allow people to think that way. But having said that, yeah. uh, let me revert to the discussion around, uh, you know, Kemsa and its role. And remember, uh, Trevor, we had a big discussion here the last time about uh, the mess uh, procurement process mm -hmm. and the equipment that was procured and the effect that it had at county government level yeah. in terms of how effect does it have on dispensation of medical care and the state of me medical health. And, and I would want to agree partly with what Atandi said, much more Atandi said first that um, yes, we have challenges of capacity at, at, at county government level, you know, uh, notwithstanding some of the few cases like, uh, you know, where, and I've said this on record here because uh, it doesn't matter that, that my good friend here is a potential president, and maybe one day we might find ourselves together in office, either me as president and him as deputy, or, or vice versa. <laughs> but but uh, this is the point. That yeah. uh, Anyway, when I visited him quite a few times uh, in Machakos, it is evident that he had done a lot of good work initially, because I saw what he had done in, when I visited uh, Nini. And I've visited other, other, other county governments yeah. uh, in, my, in my work uh, in, in public accounts. And yes, indeed, some counties have done very good work in changing where we were yeah. pre-devolution. But that does not mean yeah. that uh, they have not done, uh, they, they require to do a lot much more work to yeah. build capacity. Most of our county governments have not done enough work to utilize what they have right now. Mm -hmm. And I personally visited some counties where equipment was taken to uh, counties that are so needy. And yeah. you find a simple ma machine as an X-ray machine has been put somewhere in a store. And then you call a governor and you ask him, why did you receive this X-ray machine in a remote county where your people travel 100 kilometers yeah. to go and get X-ray services? And he gives you an ex excuse and tells you that we don't have power connection in yeah. my county in uh, where we have uh, this particular facility. Yeah. And you ask yourself, what is easier? Wouldn't you have rather spent all your time? Do you know we went to one county and we found a governor giving an excuse that he could not fix equipment worth millions of shillings for his people because he had no borehole <laughs> next to where the equipment was. <laughs> yes. 
and 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 so, uh, so 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 we must say that there are serious questions around some of the county governments. Yeah. Now, what what what, <coughs> what requires uh, to be to, to be put clear uh, for our county governors to understand is that indeed, as I said earlier, it yeah. is a reality that they have the health function as a principle in law that it has been devoted to them. So they yeah. have to put their act right. Mm -hmm. on, on the question of, uh, do we have of a ethnicization of, of, of uh, you know, workforce? Yeah. And uh, I think uh, Moshi Mwatandi had done his homework fairly well, especially uh, around his local counties, because I remember visiting Homer Bay one time. And then <laughs> that was one of the questions that I asked when we sat in a meeting with the executive. Yeah. Because when they introduced themselves, they all introduced themselves clearly with their ethnic names and they all acknowledged that 99% of them come from the same uh, community, contrary to, to what the uh, law requires. Yeah, yeah. But, but, uh, but of course, uh, I, I, I would give it to them because part of what they had as their, as, as, as their positive is that most of all those 99% were introducing themselves either as MBAs yeah. as PhDs, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and doctors. <laughs> and doctors and whatever. So, so at least, in as far as qualification is concerned, yeah. they had done very well. Okay. But of course, uh, balancing the, 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 the ethnic uh, equation is, is a necessity. Yeah. So let me, let me finalize by saying that as far as the state of our health is concerned across the country, yeah. we must tell our county governments and our county governors that they have a lot of work to do, that they have to ensure that uh, if they <coughs> receive medical equipment, then uh, they have to put it to use. Mm. Yeah. If and when uh, they have to procure uh, medical facilities, drugs and others, they have to think outside the box. I do not agree personally that you find that a county, because it has put itself in debt yeah. by overusing resources it has either to paying uh, workers or by employing, uh, corruption at, at base level yeah. that they can only revert to KEMSA because they can get credit and, and drugs without paying fast you know, in, uh, on debt in yeah. KEMSA. Th that they can think outside the box. Okay. Uh, before uh, my colleague here in this presidential bid uh, uh, you know, uh, retires in 2022, I would want to challenge him that make the dream come true of what you started of establishing in, in, in uh, Machakos here uh, what he had started. And I said here the last time, a big, big thing. He, yeah. he, he said when we started that, that, that morning that he wanted to bring India to Kenya. Yeah. Uh, how I wish that, uh, that 47 governors would bring that India and that United States to each of their counties, that, that you have uh, cancer uh, health care being provided freely in Wasengishu yeah. uh, and, and in Nandi County where Sinaji Cheragi comes. I think that is the county, that, that's the country we are aspiring to have uh, at the end of the day. Okay. So, so I think, uh, l l let me close it by saying that uh, maybe very soon, yeah. when we sit in the house on the hill, either with me on the helm and him there, or vice versa, my friend, then this country will change. Let <laughs> 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 me bring up the feedback. I wanted to hear your views on the back page of uh, Daily Nation, but I think we've run out of time. Let me, let me say something. Yes. My my, my, uh, uh, is it the time to say our last... I will give you a chance for closing comments. Fake, okay, fake closing papers. Comments. Yes, to yes I wanted to talk about these fake papers, but I know you, you take a while to respond to these issues. No, Unless quick, you give quick me one, one line because very quickly from the uh, uh, game before we uh, take this is, this, this, is, this is true. Yeah. And uh, even in politics, in leadership, <laughs> yes, ninety percent of elected leaders are fake papers. That's a fact, which you can investigate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> and it needs something that needs to be, uh, you know, you, fake know, you know, you know, there's a requirement that in the next parliament, yeah, you a must, degree. you must have a degree mm. to be a member of parliament, mm. and you must have a degree to be a member of county assembly. I know that <sighs> in the last two years. Many of my colleagues have, bec have, have gotten degrees, certificates. I yeah. don't know which degree you can get in, in under two years. Obviously, those are fake papers. So I think mm -hmm. this is a, this is a, this is a, a crisis, a mm -hmm. crisis which mm. needs to be sorted out. Okay. Yeah. Gerard, okay. Very I, I, I think I agree that uh, this is a crisis and it's unfortunate that uh, promotions within the <coughs> public sector is uh, is anchored on the qualification academic qualification so this <coughs> is a crisis in the public service and uh, and i saw the audit report on the public service uh, commission 
uh, and, uh, and we, they are gobbling a lot of uh, re uh, resources through wage bill that we have. And SRC has been complaining that, but, but it's sad that we are at this as a country. I think it shows a problem that uh, there is uh, endemic or uh, the, our education system somehow yeah. needs to be fixed at some level. But, but I hope the DCI and necessary agencies, EACC, yeah. and I agree with Atandi that there are colleagues in leadership, elected leaders, who are also having fake degrees and fake uh, academic papers. So I hope uh, going into the future we are able to address this thing once and for all. Yeah. And the, if somebody, uh, the proposal should not only be to compensate the public or uh, through the taxpayers we are paid you as a salary, but yeah. also these people must uh, face jail time. Okay. Well, thank you. Very brief remarks on this. Because I, you, you you know, um, yeah, I, I definitely wanted to be very brief, but I would like to make two points. First, uh, you know, uh, Trevor, when this debate has come to the floor of the House, it has come many times. And there's one question that always rings in my mind that was asked fundamentally by one of the one of the legislators and uh, that question will be uh, having acknowledged indeed that the lack of having proper qualifications for example in parliament degrees and so on sometimes has the negative effect of lower, lowering the level of debate and 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 making crude engagements uh, you know uh, at, at parliament level so that that is a matter of concern and what you've seen in a, our county assembly sometimes when an argument cannot end in a solution it ends up in fist fights and yeah. breaking of chairs and burning of, 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 of things. That, that, that is a manifestation of the problems of what would happen when you have uh, you know, a community or a people who <coughs> are just meeting and they, 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 they've not advanced the course of good education. Yeah. But there's a question that was asked that I believe in my mind is very fundamental. Somebody asked uh, when we brought this about in parliament and asked, how many in the ge general population of Kenya right now would you argue and say that they have degrees? How many? If I represent in the county of Kiambu 3.3 million people as of today, how many people in Kiambu in three, out of the 3.3 million have degrees? And then you would then be asking yourself, what was the constitution of that first court in the Roman Empire? When the, the concept of people representation yeah. and in, in, the, in, in, in uh, the days of, uh, of, of Caesar and Brutus, you know, what, what was, what was the, 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 the threshold? Yeah. What were the qualifications? And, but what indeed, most fundamentally, yeah. is the intended purpose of politics yeah. and representative politics for that matter? And, and you, you would want to ask and have an answer, uh, Trevor, that is clear in this sense. Does it help or pay to have or to try to make politics and representation an elitist uh, thing? I, I think that is a discourse that people, people must have. Okay. Because if, if you are saying that the, the, the senator for West Pokot, and I'm not trying to, to, to diminish the people of, of, of West Pokot, if you say the senator for Trukana, if you say the senator where education still has not reached fully yeah. as it is, because that is a reality. And then you say that you find that within those communities, where the access to education is still a problem. Yeah. And, and, and you have 